Yeah. So good afternoon, Mr. Good Tomlin. Afternoon. And good afternoon, Mr. Campbell. Delighted <laughs> to meet you at last. <laughs> ah, likewise, sir. Likewise. We've had a yes. few conversations on the, on the phone. And yes, uh, yes, here yes. we are in, in the flesh, so to speak, even though it's across the line. And yes, that's we right. That's are right. here to have a chat. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Uh, uh, that's <laughs> most welcome. I'm yeah, delighted. I I'm delighted to do that, yes. Yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Forgotten Generations um, project mm -hmm. and initiative. And, yes, yes, you know, yes. listening to your background or, or, or reading up some stuff on, on you, 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 you are an entrepreneur, you are you're, you're a music historian, you're a globetrotter, <laughs> and et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, yes. what, what, I no, what I normally do, as a part of this interview is to start from a very young age, you know, right. like uh, yes, where you yes. were born and, and okay. then you grow up and, and school. And okay, so, all right, yes, yes, okay. Over to you, sir. Right, uh, uh, where do we begin? I was born in 1957 at okay. St. Thomas Hospital in London. Okay. Yes, um, I did the, of course, the St. Thomas Hospital that we know now is very, is the, the other side of the Thames looking towards the, the House of Parliament, of course, okay. but I don't know if it was the original site, because I think it, it, um, it combined together with Guy's Hospital, it became this big an NHS trust. But okay. yes, but originally I was born at St. Thomas Hospital in 19, right. July of 1957. July of July. 1957 yes <laughs> I'm a July man as well <laughs> oh fantastic so <laughs> that, that sounds very good already <laughs> we're quite creative people very uh, yes, very indeed. very uh, very much forward thinking strategies you know, yes and yes. um, so did you mm. remain in that area for a long time or what, what happened well then? my my parents uh my parents was in the Wandsworth area Wandsworth mm -hmm. um and um, don't know all the details, but eventually they eventually moved towards Ether Green, where they had the first property. Now, okay. of course, um, which is interesting about that is that at the time my dad was also pastoring as well. Okay, he, uh, he was he was he had his own pastor past pastorate. Or, yes uh, uh or church so to speak yeah, he started he started at brixton at first at offley road and okay. then reverend su thompson or bishop bishop su thompson my godfather took it over from him wow. and then my dad moved to Catford to start a ministry there okay yeah. and what's your dad's name is j.a tomlin james augustus tomlin bishop wow, james wow, augustus wow. tomlin yes and he was originally from uh, jamaica Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and your mom as well. That's right. They both came to the UK in 1955. Okay, okay. Yes, so yes. they're very much a part of the Windbush area. That's that right. Era. Yeah, uh, that's and and also um, with my dad, he was a highly skillful best boat tailor. You know, he would understand fashion. He was very skillful in fashion. All right. And yes, yes. Um, he he was a, a Savoy trained. Okay, oh, really? He was highly skillful, yes. And he went uh, to Croydon Technical College. So he got his... Oh, okay. um, so, okay. Really? Uh, really? Yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, so, and so, of course, yeah. Go on, yes. So what happened next then in terms of, you know, you, you were born in London and moved around little bits and pieces and you were thrown into life in school, et etc. Et well, um, Church. The, the first the first school I went to was Evergreen Primary School, which still exists, okay. uh, not too far away from Evergreen Hospital, which is now um, residential property. That that was one of the early NHS see the big NHS hospitals that was based in Evergreen, but it was sold off and it, and it became pro uh, property residential buildings. Okay, you, right and now everything is uh, now at Lewisham hospital which is the what you right, could say one of the right, major right, right. um nhs hospital in the southeast not too far but not too far from greenwich anyhow mm -hmm. right so after i went to primary school at evergreen primary mm -hmm. my parents finally moved to 
um, Eltham Road, Eltham Road, which is off Brownhill Road, 141. It was a corner property, semi-detached with a big garage. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. very unusual for West Indian parents to have that. It was a huge property. All right, I see. Okay. Yeah, yes. And so it became the, uh, should I say, the gathering place for the church to develop. And my late, my friend's late parents, the less, were part of the cornerstone of that ministry as well, because they, they had this church was started in their front room as well. So right. they, 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 that UT, UNT, uh, yeah. UT church in particular. And that. So that's particular, a New Testament church? Yes, that started in Catford, which okay. ev evolved, ev ev evolved into Lee District. Right. After right. my dad migrated, ah, oh, but let's go back a bit here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this. After when I was at Cap, when I was at Ether Green in particular, yeah. at Ether Green's primary school, there was a Denmark headmaster. The headmaster he was from Denmark, Mr. Lee. You know, yeah. you tend to remember all these significant people in your life. Yes, actually. Yes. Yeah. And then there was another. Uh, there was. Uh, a music teacher by the name of Mrs. Jenk, Miss Jenkins, uh, Spencer, but she was, I, I remember a lot because of her passion to do with music. Okay. Uh, she was a beauty in a way, a bit, you know, yeah. but I, I loved yeah. her, you know, she, yeah. she was so passionate about it. Sometimes we gave her a bit of problem for <laughs> students, but, but yeah. she was, and all these people, including Mr. Lee, were sort of, what you call the significant people in my life in okay. my formative years. Formative yes, years. yes, yes, yes. Mr. Lee was from Denmark originally. Mm. And Mr. Brooks, um, I think his name is Mr. Brooks, was a British, he was the deputy at the big stuff. Man. But yeah. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, I remember they were trying to, uh, there was certain things that Mr. Lee wasn't satisfied with how they were treating me in class. And okay. I never, I never forget Mr. Lee actually reprimanding the deputy head and the other people. And he was so red with passion. Right. He loved me a lot. He, said, okay. he was saying to them, this boy is special. Okay. This boy is special. What, was that uh, academically across the board or was it particularly into music or what? What, 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 what did that mean? Uh, um, was... He said that I had, um, from what he could tell, I had a creative but unusual way of processing things and oh, doing things right. and okay. understanding how to use maths and science combined and so on you know right, he saw right. certain things he saw right. certain things that was uh, but he, he found it difficult to explain it because it depends on the academic thought of the, of the day the yeah. academic thought of the day determines you know because remember more and more as education evolved and new technology and yeah. style of because um, by the way, there are 10 ways of measuring a genius, actually. Okay. There are 10 ways. Some, some people are genius in terms of the creative side of it, in the science, yes, in yeah. sports, right. and in different things. Right, so they're right, different, right. they're leadership geniuses. You know, so leadership. you spotted something in you then? Yes, you spotted some something. People, some people would probably not see. That's correct. Right, That's and, correct. and the fact that if they didn't see that, that would probably become a problem for you because then you would probably become a frustrated because yes, your right. ability is not recognised. Okay. That's right. I get, I get yeah, that. yeah. Now, this is quite interesting. After I finished Evergreen Primary School, I went to Catford Boys, which doesn't exist anymore. It was on Brownhill Road. Right, Catford right. Boys is on Brownhill Road. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Now that has turned into private residence, you know, buildings where the prison. And do you, and do you do you own those residents? I wish I could have owned it. It would be quite <laughs> be done. <laughs> that would be like, can you imagine that? I think I would be I would be a property tycoon, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but mind you, I own I own intellectual property in terms of books and so on for what oh, okay. they created. So I, I we, we're moving in a different direction, which is far more powerful because that is right. transcending in itself. But All however, right. okay. yeah. at Cap for Boys, at Cap, Cap for Boys, I started to develop my my creative arts more, you know, art and yeah. so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a different way of dealing with English as well, literature, because I wrote literature in a creative way. You know, I oh. saw it, and it never, it, it was never conforming to the, whatever was going on at the, the, the norm. time. The, the, the norm. norm, the norm, the norm. 
I looked at things in a very uh, holistic, from a peripheral, a very aerial point of view. Right. Life, I, the way I studied people, the way I looked at things. Now, when I was at Cap for Boys in particular, before, uh, before my parents migrated to Jamaica. Right. Uh, I remember I was involved in theatre production and using my visual arts experience to do the backdrop for the production. So how old were you then? I was, uh, those, those days I was between 11 to 13. I was doing that from year seven, yes. I was doing and all that. And you were involved sort of... in the theatre production? Yes, I was involved in theatre production, designing the backdrop. The last memorable, last memorable production I did was mm. the, the Battle of Trafalgar, Erasure and Nelson, one of my favourite admirals. We really? Did, yes, we did all the production. We did uh, created um, simulation of cannon fire, and we we painted. And we made sure that the, the, certain groups of students had um, the red coats, uh, you know, for the marines. Yes, yes, the, yes, yeah. yes, And yes. then you had the blue coats for the the French marines, etc. So we we did a sort of enactment of that battle. Brilliant. Naval brilliant, battle. Brilliant. So that brilliant. was my last memorable one. And we made prop props, military props, you know, weapons. We built them from scratch, working in the wood woodwork and so forth. So we, we used a full, uh, full uh um technology department, you know, woodwork and so forth, oh, okay. and metal okay. to create the props for, yeah. And that, then was something, that must have been very, very, very interesting. And yeah. to be involved in all of that at such a, at such a young age as well, yes. you know? Yeah. I, the only reason why I remember this because people are asking me questions and things are coming back. Yes, and yes, I yes, call yes. them. I call these significant developments in my life with yes. my artistic intelligence, you know, yes. developed. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So mm -hmm. you were talking about your parents going back to the Caribbean. At what stage then? Did your parents go back to Jamaica in, in, in this? Right. This is quite interesting because it was a significant period. Um, um, it's going back a bit before that. Uh, there was significant impact for me in 19, 1967. 1967, I became, uh, I, be, I turned 10 years old. Yes. Mm. And I do remember it for some reason because I remember Aretha Franklin became popular overnight. Right. That was the year that she did her first million seller. Mm. Wow. And also to do with Motown. This is the first time I'm going to see Blacks emerging as, as, as iconic pop icons, you know. So, and, so, so at 10, 8 years old, you, you, you recognised that? You actually saw? Yes, I actually recognised that there were, there were significant things going on within uh, the the mu black music community in the US in particular, because okay. uh, until recently, I always say about say five, six, or ten years ago, I discovered that very year in 1967, that was when the US music market went over the billion dollar mark in wow. gross earning in 67, okay. Okay. and Aretha Franklin and Motown and Curtain Records, all these different black labels and black productions were right. significant to that, you see. Right, that, right, right. That particular year as well, I know mm. I'm just going back a bit, that particular mm. year, Aretha Franklin did about 3.5 million copies in albums and singles. Yeah. Really? So and, she was and did, it, you, yeah. did mm. you manage to, to, to own any of these records? I know you're 10, but you know, well, uh, you know. No, not, not yet. It was later on when I okay. had the funds to do it. But okay. Okay. through the introduction of my uncles and, and so on, and um, who were very much, I tell you one thing I, that caused a, a tremendous impact on me is when I saw in my hand, when my uncle gave me this, he said, listen to this, listen to, you know, Jermaine, listen to this, yeah. listen to this. Uh, he gave me the Isaac Hayes album, Hot Butter oh. Soul. Wow. That actually changed, this is the first time I've seen a black man on an album, and it looked iconic. And I said, yeah. what? So yeah. or th there was constant impression of things that yes. uh, just impacting my black consciousness or my creative and making me realize that there's more to being black than just yes, yes, what yes, is yes. actually being said in media and so forth, you know. And that mm. was quite an impactive um, um, album. Yes, um, because it was the first, um, one of the first album of its kind 
as blacks begin to get involved in the album market in particular yeah. sector to actually be number one across several charts and yeah. also was a million seller as well and the music was very the, the, well the music was the music was revolutionary there yes. was a few few tracks and he did an interpretation um, um walk and by walk and by which totally in itself was revolutionary full on section he yes, used, yes, he, yes. Used, he used people from the Detroit Symphony Orchestra that was connected to Motown, you know, part of that. Yeah, and, yeah. and he used people that were from Memphis. So it's a whole wow. two Brilliant. cities were involved in that iconic Brilliant. album. Yes, anyhow. Yeah. I can tell that you can go down so many different avenues. I can <laughs> certainly, <laughs> because um, I studied uh, my late friend, Linton Bettle. It's a pity you haven't met this gentleman. He was my mentor for 10 years prior to his death in oh. 20, 2015, in particular. Right. Yeah. Um, he always said to me, young man, my dear friend, he's a year old, and he said, study the peripheral of the industry and the cult cultural movement. Study right. everything connects with each other. You might yes. not see it now, but it connects because these are significant movements that impact the other one that's coming. It's I like, hear what you're saying. Yeah, I hear what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yes, so, yes. so my question at the moment then, talking about connectivity, here you are, in born in London, England, and then you transferred to the warmth of the Caribbean, as in Jamaica. Aha! This is where, <laughs> yes, brother, this is where it gets very interesting. Yeah. I think that is vitally important that, as possible, uh, most Blacks youngsters need to sometimes go to where their parents' roots is from. I, 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 I love that thought straight away. Yeah, because I, um, yeah. this is what happened. Remember, I remember when I was speaking to Mr. Farm, Mr. Farmer, who was the ed teacher of Cat for Boys before it closed down. And mm. he's he a very pleasant man because mm. Mr. Mr. Payne used to be, Mr. Brooks was the... Um, ed teacher before and so Mr Farmer took over right and we were having a chat he was talking to me and my dad and he's, he's looking at me and he's smiling and went hmm you're going to Jamaica you know saying hmm, very interesting you're going to your parents homeland I hope and trust <laughs> so how old were you then I was a because it was not around about 1970 71 1970 that's a very interesting period yeah. um I'm trying to remember I would be because I went to I went to secondary school mm. around sixty nine. Yes, that's why I went to sixty nine. Uh, well, because I was ten in nineteen seventy, and year eleven at eleven years eleven years old, you go to secondary school. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I um I would be about what about twelve? Yeah, about about twelve. Okay. Yes, okay. Okay. 12, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I would be in um two years on in secondary school, of course. Mm, mm, mm. So oh, Mr. Farm was telling me, so I didn't take my O levels yet, but I was in the middle somewhere, you know. Just, yeah, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Farm was, uh, and you're saying, um, uh, funny thing, my my two brother in law and my brother and several other people I know from childhood went mm. to went to that school. It's a very significant school, Catford Boys. Mm. Uh, one of the, uh, it doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately, but mm. it was closed down. You know, lots of schools combined and so forth yes. oh, but, right, Cat, yeah, yeah. but Catford for Catford girls when my sisters went still exist still exist all oh, right okay yeah. so mm. was it the old family then that sort of decided or uprooted and go back to Jamaica yes yes mum wasn't well and it was recommended that she go to a warmer climate you know oh, okay yeah and so dad pulled up his time at as his the church was going to grow tremendously mm. Mm. And uh, it's a lot of people felt lost after my dad left because okay. he was. Uh, when you talk, when you interview, say like Delroy and all these different people who are significant in NT or New T now yeah. at different levels, senior level, they mm. would tell you they would give you their spin on what they thought about my dad. My dad oh, okay. was. Okay. My dad was. He, in other words, he was quite impacting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very instrumental. In the Very instrumental. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So, yes. Uh, right around that time before I went away, I became friends to Fix McIntyre, the late Jerry McIntyre's son, Jerry McIntyre, which was uh, one of the key architects to do it, 
new T. He was a former bishop. He became a bishop as well. Yes, he was yes, a yes. district overseer. Yes, and yes, he was a yes. multi instrumentalist and a songwriter. That brother was, what you say, he was ahead of his time. Right. Okay. 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 And he influenced, it impacted his son, who became, uh, of course, the co founding member of Simply Red. But really? anyhow, I remember okay, this yes. is my friend. He's all grown up. But yeah, anyhow, yeah. Yeah, I left. I left. I left my brothers and then migrated to Jamaica. So sorry, you left your brothers. Yeah, when I say brothers, my brothers, sister, in church, my good friend, my close oh, yeah, friend. Oh okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. migrated. The whole family, the whole family migrated the entire. Yes, yeah, exactly. all migrated. I'm the oldest of all the the eight children. I'm the oldest. Oldest. All right. Them. So how many how many siblings have you got? Right. I've I've got um, in terms of. There's six of us as boys and three girls. One of my one, yes, one of my one of my one of the girls is adopted and she's she's probably <laughs> she you wouldn't believe that she's not Tomlin because she looks like the Tomlins. Oh, right. Okay, that's but she yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. she was um she was a closely knitted to our family. Um uh, so as far as I know, I have three sisters, three sisters. Right. So you all went? Yes, all went. All went. And the sister I'm talking about, my parents took, uh, she came part of our family when we moved to Jamaica. You know, that okay. young lady, okay. yeah. Uh, she lives in New York now, present. Right, but right, anyhow, right. when I came to Jamaica, we resided in Porus, Manchester. Oh, Manchester, okay. Yeah, Forest Manchester, yes, which yes, is not yes. far from which is not far from Mandeville, and it's not far from Williamsfield, the box site, box site, you know, site. Oh right, yes, 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 yes. That was a big employer for yes. people oh, yes. in in Saint Elizabeth, Saint yes. Anne's, and so forth. You know, yes. yeah, yeah. right. Went to school, a uh, poor secondary school. Uh, developed my art, my passion as an art. So, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you here. Yes, for me. When you go from one country to another, yes. as a youngster, yes, the, 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 there is quite a transformation. So whether you leave the Caribbean and come here, or you leave here and go to the Caribbean. So I, I'm pausing here to say, what was that like? I mean, dad comes and say, or oh, mommy, we're going to the Caribbean. You start thinking, right? And then well, you get to I, the did, uh, I uh, the thing about it, uh, when I went to the Caribbean, I begin to see my cousins who were older than me, younger than me, mm -hmm. my my um, my uncle who is younger than us from the second marriage of well, my grandfather, mm -hmm. um, my, my my maternal grandmother died, both of mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting enough, my paternal grandmothers they are mixed race really. One is Indian born; she's an Indian woman from India. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so okay. the Indian is set, plus with some of my grand uncles and so on. Yes, 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 yes. And then, uh, and then my grandmother from my mother, both of my grandmothers died the same year in 1962. So it's quite, oh, okay, okay. It's quite yeah. impacting. They died of a stroke. Okay, it's, it's, okay, it's, okay. It's, uh, still, um, and those who remember my Indian grandmother, she, they said that she was a sassy woman. She was beautiful. <laughs> she was beautiful. Her hair was down her butt. <laughs> and she loved her grandchildren and oh, um, right, 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 and she right. was quite yeah they call, yeah, yeah. They call her Miss Jane. <laughs> Miss Jane. So, so here you are transferring from England to a warmer climate and you arrived. What what was that like? What are your first uh, first of all when I arrived it was hot. Yeah man. Uh, you know <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, before we arrived in Jamaica we stopped in New York. All oh, right. Okay. And so, what, so, so what what um time of the year was that? That was uh, that was the winter season, so it was still January sometime. Yeah. Oh, so that's really cold in New York. Yes, then. yes, yes. And remember, at that time when I, I when I came to um, Jamaica, uh, Britain had just entered the common market under oh. Teddy. Bro, all oh, right, okay. okay, okay, think, okay. So there's been there's been a lot of significant things, and plus plus during that time as well, yeah. you, you're going to start having that oil embargo yes you remember? yes yes, yes and, I do. and 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 um and then the watergate situation begin to develop yeah. so there's yes, a lot yes. of significant things 
during right. my time migrating from the UK to Jamaica. Okay, right. right. Yeah. And at the time, Michael Manley was in power as the uh, premier. Okay, okay. Yes, right, yes, right, yes, right, yes, right, yes, right, yes. right. Do you so, see? So, see so there's a lot of significance in right, A lot of significance. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how much of that you were absorbing in terms of the bigger picture when you get there, because when you travel and get to another country like that, you know, you, you're busy with the, the everyday life, aren't you, in terms of well, what... Well, I... I am a deep thinker. I always would do a lot of reflection. Because okay. what, was, what was going on, first of all, I'm in the Caribbean, I'm dealing with reggae. This is the this is the bedrock of yes. Jamaican yes. music. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And also I'm listening to um um Don Doppin and all these radio personalities. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh dancing, hmm, it's quite different. Yeah, yeah. They sound different. They're definitely yeah. not British, but yeah. they speak very well, don't they? Yeah. You know, yeah. speak very well. Yeah. And I'm um, listening to the cultural icons of the day, Miss Bennett, cultural icon. Oh, uh, Miss Bennett. Yeah, 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 Miss Bennett, and going to the theatre and watching them act. Oh, right? in, in Jamaica. Yes, I did go to Jamaica. Yes, I went. I, I did do a lot of cultural activity, visiting these uh, places of significance. Yes, yes, yes. yes national yes, yes. National Art Gallery, Jamaica National Art Gallery. Right, looking at, right. Looking at the Caribbean masters. Uh, yeah. Okay, but before we start getting to that, yeah. the poorest secondary school. Mm. Uh, fascinating. The ed teacher was black. Mm -hmm. Head of the science department, black. Head of mass black. Now to see, see, think about the impact from a white, predominantly white populated teaching staff right. to a black, largely black teaching staff. And and that's why, of, that's yeah, why yeah. I asked the question. Yeah, because it was it, impacting. Because yes. first of all, first of all, I discovered, oh, blacks can do what the whites do. So it was <coughs> that was that was actually impacting to me. That's because, great. And I said, wow, my. Ed teacher, he was trained at Leeds University, but yet he's actually in charge. Whoops, whoops he's actually in charge. Oh, I, I lost it for a minute. What did, what did I do? He's um one second. Uh yeah, he's actually in charge of a secondary school. Yeah. And his assistant principal is also black. Yes. Still, yes. Yeah. I said, yeah. hmm, very yeah. interesting. <laughs> 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 Everything. And the thing about it, they're telling me I can do this thing. Yes. 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 Without you even can saying a word. Without, without saying a word, they yeah. say that, you know, uh, I said, yeah. oh, you know, they're teaching me about Caribbean history mm. <laughs> and about civil duties, you know, civics. Because remember, by the time I reached to my adulthood, early mm. adulthood, I became a Jamaican citizen. That's quite interesting. I <laughs> voted in Jamaica. I was oh, involved. Wow. In, that, that, I was, a, that, I was involved. Yeah, I was involved in civic responsibility. You know, meeting the politicians. But we let's we hold back a bit. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Hold yeah, back yeah, a yeah. bit. And at the same time, I'm dealing with that. I'm simulating the sounds that are coming out of the U.S. Because in the night, you hear, you know, on the short wave, you hear, you know, what's coming out of Chicago, what's coming out of Philadelphia, and yeah. what's coming out of Detroit. Black yeah. sound, you know, and Memphis. So, yes. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of a lot of things culturally significant yeah. was happening during that time. Yeah. So if I just pause you there, yes. You see what, what I'm talking to you about now, the commonality of when I interviewed people, it's the other way around, where people leave the Caribbean and come here. And a lot of time, the experience of coming into a climate change <laughs> mm. like this, where it's so cold, right? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. you talk about the um the faces of people in 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 um uh in, in authority it was a complete change so when you come from black people and you see white faces only right and no black people in in in, in sort of schoolmaster teacher yes, whatever, uh, people, places uh, positions of influence absolutely yes it, absolutely. it does but yeah. i went the opposite direction yes, where yes. i saw blacks people of influence influence right yes Yes, significant, significant. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And yeah, 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 yeah. The, you had the, the the governor of the Bank of Jamaica is, you know, black mixed race. Mm. The you know, 
the head of this, the head of the Jamaican National Art Gallery is black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we go on more and more? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Then, then, yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah. you have, then you have, a uh, prime minister is is light skinned but of course he's Jamaican born. Mm -hmm. Mother was Edna Manley. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, of the thing about it, what is interesting, I remember actually meeting Prime Minister Michael Manley in person. I've actually another person who I met. These are when I went to art college. Another oh, okay. person, yeah, another person I met as well was Andrew Young. Who used to be this, uh, that, yeah. this, uh, this, yeah. the secretary of United Nation under the Carter administration? So I meet oh. these people. So my profile was going to I was going to elevate in black consciousness and showing significant that listen, these are black brothers yes. within a white establishment. Yeah, they yes. can do it. I can do it. Okay, let's go back a bit. Yeah. Um, before I went to art school in particular you know, mm. further education. Mm. I had the privilege of winning a prize and receiving it from Michael Manley's wife. Really? Mm. Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yes, it was, yes. And um, my art teacher, Miss Ellis, lover to bits, beautiful, yeah. conscious black woman. Yeah. She said to me, I wanted to prepare you to go to art school, actually because you've got that brilliant flair. you got that gift in. I said, okay. So she prepared me. I went to the art school for the interview. My dad went with me. And then the principal at the time was Mr. Craig. Mr. Craig is a uh, white Jamaican born, but taught and trained in the UK. So he's, right. part of yeah. his family is from the UK, well, another half. And his wife is British born. Yeah. And half is from Jamaica. So they, they're the, um, what you say, the white people who came in during the colonial times and, yes, yes, second, yes. and made their roots in Jamaica. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when he saw me, he said, Ah, oh, I know the school you went to, Cap for Boys. I used to teach up the road at Eltham School. Oh, okay. welcome aboard. I like your work. It's good. You welcome aboard. We accept your entry into the school. So, oh, oh, wow. Yeah. So I did four years. At Jamaica School of Art. I'm I I am a Jamaica School of Art suit. You looking at one? Jamaica School of Art, the school wow. that was the school that was founded by Edna Manley, Michael Manley's mother. And where was that? Oh, it's based in King King Street, down not too far from the Gleaner newspaper office. Is that yes. in Kingston? Yes, downtown Kingston. That's where wow. it was originally. Yes. Mm. Okay, that, that yes, is yes, that's probably. quite something. That's quite something. Yes, 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 yes. So I went there from 1974 to 1978. I did a diploma and certificate in education and all kinds of different stuff, certain, et cetera, right? Yeah. Uh, during that time, during that time, what is fascinating as well, when I was there, eventually when the school actually moved to the Ottawin Drive, the cultural centre, Ottawin is the famous... Jamaican athlete who won a gold during the Helsinki oh, Games. Oh, Arthur Wint. Arthur Wint, brother. Yes, Arthur yes. Wint. Yes. yes, during yes, the yes. yeah, the, the the cultural center was named after him. Okay. Arthur Wint. Yes. 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 And yes, then yes. you had the drama school, the dance school, and the art school combined under one in this big complex. Okay. Okay. I was one of the. I was one of the first. Of art students to graduate, second group of art students uh, of my year to graduate from that institution, that complex. Wow. Wow. Now, prior to actually graduating, this is where it's interesting. I had a one year experience with the professor Rex Neckleford. By that time, I became, I was 20 years old. That's another significant 20 years old, 1977. Mm. Mm. See what happened in uh, 67, yes. another, another key event in 77. Right. 20 years old and listen to this brother, this brilliant Caribbean intellectual, Professor Rex Neckerford, delivering things of historical contents, Black history, in wow. a with total mastery and elegance and control. Yes. You know what is interesting about it? He didn't look at any notes, brother. I love that. He I did not that. look at any notes. 
He no. was that. He was like crap. He was like as if he's pulling. This happened here, and this, and this compared there, and this is what happened to impact that. And we were just watching. I said, just bruv. I said, no, I like to emulate this man. Yes. I need to be in this. And I said, and uh, I said, the, he always said that we need to study. Blacks. We need to study and, you know, discover, not to live in ignorance, you know, talking. Uh, uh, he commanded respect, right? I can tell. No, 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 no. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Professor Rex Neckersford is one of the black legends and intellectual iconic. I mean, he made, he, there were, there's very few blacks, even in the UK and Africa, in my view, for what I know, and in the US, that can actually match his intellect. He was, he was, he was the master. Wow. And also he was a dance instructor as well, because he was okay. trained, he was trained in the UK. I think he went to the Royal College of uh, Drama. I can't remember, but mm. he's fully, totally creative. He's a total wow. master. Yeah. That was significant in 1977. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A significant period in my life. Another significant period is when Teddy Prendergast burst on the scene in 1977 oh, as a gosh. solo artist. Yes, solo artist. Wow. So that was significant for me because I liked his. Uh, and yes. when he did when he did that track, somebody told me to deliver this message. I said, yes, I like. There's something about that, you know. So all these different things during that period begin to synchronize and develop my musical intelligence and passion right. for, create, for creativity. Yes. Yes. And yes. between from 67, from 76, rather, from 76, I did my practice teaching on several occasions at Trench Town. Trench Town. Town, bro. The Trench Town. The Trench Town. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of the students of, in my year didn't want to go down there. But me being an adventurer. And not and thinking out of the box and like to say, let me try this out of curiosity. <laughs> and I went there, and the thing that they were concerned about, they said, uh, first of all, you don't speak like a Jamaican young man. You're very much British. So what are you? Know, of course, that that was interesting. So the <laughs> students, the students were interested in me. So yes. they tell their parents. So with all the political violence, they were protecting me. So oh, teacher. Okay. He already said, teacher, everything all right. You're covered, man. Come, come. When you're ready, when you leave in school, let me know. I'll be taking you through. <laughs> said, okay. I'm just trying to imitate there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lingo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're safe, man. You're safe. You're safe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bruv, you got to think about the impact. When I was in the classroom, I, I hear the gunfire going off. Wow. Everything. So... You're talking about cultural impact and experience. Deep, <laughs> deep, deep. It, deep, it is deep, deep, brother. It's deep, 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 deep. Uh, and on top of that, during that time, during that period, uh, another significant thing happened. I met Roberta Flat, bro. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. While I was involved, while I was involved with the music students and we're doing the props and development and production and all that, helping them, you know, doing the job. Uh, I met Roberta Flack. She came, uh, it's either just after she did that classical hit with the late Donny Hathaway, the closer I get to you. So she yes. was on top of the game, you know, she was really in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this lady is highly sophisticated, very well-spoken, right. well to put together, very beautiful swag. You know, I just, I, I got more to love my black woman more when I see her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say, oh, oh, geez. <laughs> and I remember she came and visited the cultural arts center. She came in her car, two other brothers came out, two other black brothers, part of mm. her band, so to speak. Yeah. Because they weren't, because they, um, I didn't know this until some time ago that Roberta Flack came down to Jamaica a lot to do practice and you know do recording sessions at tough oh. uh, you know bob marley's you know tough gang studio mm, okay yeah. come okay. and jam she, just a jam she liked the weather and, and she's yeah, 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 yeah. cool and she can chill out yes. from, from the hustle and bus of new york yes you know yes. what i mean so, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. gambling enough used to do the same thing many of the that like, turn off the light was actually <laughs> composed 
when they used to have the they have to electrical rationing, you know, in Jamaica. Okay. Said, yeah, turn off the light. You said right. all these significant uh, these things impacted me as well. Right. I was yes. I was living there when these guys were creating the sound, closed the door and all of that. Right, right. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back a bit now. Uh, when Roberta Flack came on the scene, she visited, she came up to me and my friend and said, uh, do you know where the um, the lecture theatre is, where I'm going to conduct? I said, oh, yes, we do, actually. Yes, yeah, so I, I put on my accent. Oh, yes, we do. I said, hmm. And I, I, I mean, right, boy, I'm in right, I, if I go any further, I would start kissing her. That was that close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, I said yeah, yeah. And then me and my friend realised who she was. Oh, Roberta. I said, and then we said, um, Miss, Miss Flack, we, Miss Roberta Flack, we're going to be at your lecture. And she said, hmm, hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, just, you talk about, you talk about elegance. That woman had it. Really? She carried it. Wow. And uh, I never forget when we went to a lecture, which she was conducted, and she was telling that how she created a song and what she did, and the bass player, bass player, the rhythm guitarist was there, and she was on the keyboard. That was another impact. And I said, hmm, I need to combine music with the arts, my visual arts. Mm. So these are all the little templates. And yes. that's what, that was prior to coming back to England, you know, prior. Okay. So that formative years, nearly 10 years in Jamaica was impacting to me, brother. What yes. you get, what you get today. Wow. Wow. So that's the first decade of a significant experience prior to coming back to the UK. Oh. And and um I get to teach full time after graduate from, graduate from college at Spaulding Secondary School and Knotts College, which is a grammar school. So I taught my discipline. So you actually taught so in Jamaica full time, yes, as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah, both practice teaching and full time. Yes, yes. So, what age did you start teaching? I started teaching in 1978. I was 21 years old, wow. mm, full time. But and I taught what? before that. I taught. I taught. I taught in 1976. But I was in my early teens. But I was so skillful enough at it that I could deliver content to the visual arts. Yes, as good. So, what is, so what, what, yeah. What were What were your subjects? That what were you actually teaching? Okay, my subject mainly the time was art, visual arts. I okay. taught visual arts. This skill set, how to do, how to do anatomy drawing, how to do portraits and painting, and sometimes I might do a bit of. Um, I might talk about a bit of music history, but this is what's interesting. My last year at art college before I graduated, I did my major piece at Vernal Rubin, one of the leading Jamaican artists, Vernal Rubin. Right. And, and he made me actually do the painting under the sound of the A train by Duke Ellington. Boy, <laughs> sweet. Bro, I was swinging, you know, and it's Miles Davis. <laughs> um, 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 Wayne Shorter and all these brothers, Sonny Rowland. These are the sort of people that help me with my creativity. So I'm listening to sonic, sonic vibrations while I'm painting. So I'm hearing colors. I'm looking at colors, ah. colors by music. My major piece was. My my major piece was um, was um, it was to do with um, uh, social unrest in Jamaica. That's okay. the painting I did, uh, political unrest and so forth. And the Mr. Watson, this you know this elite Jamaican artist, was saying, "Why did you do this, sir?" And I said, "Well, I was reflecting on the, what was happening in society, actually." Mm -hmm. And then my my one of my, my full time teachers start Fendi, yes. He's reflecting on what was happening. He can argue it. He was reflecting. This is a powerful step. And I got full marks for that, bro. Oh, really? Full marks. Yes. And it was on display at the school before I left. Yes, yes. Can I ask then, have you got any of these or some of these um, originals from those back in those days as painting? I've only got one, actually. And my friend has yeah. got, my friend has got one. Daryl Henry's got one I did in the 60s. Mm. He managed to. It was the first time I did the artwork for him, and he said it impacted him mm. when I left. And I got one, only one original from the seventies, and it's um, it's a, a artwork of Jamaican percussion instruments, brother. 
of all things. That's the last surviving. <laughs> 1978. Wow. <laughs> so the reason, I, the reason I ask, right, is because, mm -hmm. um, you know, history, photograph is such yeah. a big part of history. You know, yes, when you go back right. to school days or, and, 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 and those kind of educational years, if you've got something like that to show, I, I, I would I would definitely like to have a copy of any of those images that you are able to release to put on my website because yeah, I yes, think that's yes. significant. Yeah, you know, I've uh, this is interesting. Um, uh, that's the uh, of course it's a surviving one because mm. I've lost a lot of them in my moving around yes. when I came back yeah. to the UK, migrate, so things got lost and unfortunately. Not everybody is very appreciative of creative no. um, artwork. You know, they no, don't no. they don't understand the significance of it because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a different world. You see, yes, because yes, yes, yes. people need to understand that during the seventy, especially during the Thatcher years, yes, uh, the, the creative industry was doing about twenty six billion pounds, twenty six billion pounds, bro. Wow. So. Uh, depends on who is actually getting a share of that, you see. Yeah. <laughs> that's why copyrights, that's why copyrights, intellectual property is one of the most significant thing in any country's economic balance yeah. of payment because it could be a difference between being broke. The interesting thing about Britain, uh, Britain in particular, as the third biggest music market in the world, Okay. It, it's a very serious operative cr creatively in terms of songwriting, the arts and the theatre and so on. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. You know, it is. Britain is highly significant in the creative affairs of business. Yes, mm. absolutely fantastic. And that's why we, we as Blacks need to be literate and very conscious and really know the business sector of it, know the business. So when we're executing and doing things, we're creating things long-term for long-term impact and to actually let our future generation have a share of the pie long-term. I like that. Share. I... See, everything I do, I do it strategically. When I'm writing, when yeah. I'm talking to my students, I talk to them strategically. Right. I said yes. to them, where are you going to be in five years? John, where are you going to be in 20 years? You're 16 now. You're going to be 26. What's going to happen between that time? Uh, mm. I want you to think about this. Mm. I said it to black students and whites. I meet some of my students who are uh, media specialists. I met one the other day. I, I couldn't stop kissing her to be in myself. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, okay. I said, Chantel, <laughs> Chantel, Chantel. Chantel. <laughs> so we met at the airport and whoa. And yeah. uh, she told me, sir, I would never forget it. I said, girl, I, I yeah. listen, my white students, all of them just said, he, he was the boss. That's what they tell, they tell people, he was the boss. Uh, by the way, when I used to teach, when I used to, when I te taught in England, mm -hmm. I had standing up, standing ovation before I came into the class, bro. Oh, so, 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 so yeah, they, I was so impacted that when I visited, they haven't seen me for a long time. They said, sir, <laughs> and then the head teacher, the head of the department said, I never had any stand innovation. I said, yeah. Yeah, no you Anyhow, know, I'm forwarding yeah. a bit, but I'm just telling you something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and and, it, and it's also great because it's easy to sort of go in, you know, here, there, and off and back again, which is fantastic. So you talk about coming back to England, which really and truly, I suppose we should use as the second episode because we're going to call this episode one. Uh, now you're talking, yes, because that is episode two, actually, yes, of yes. this this creative journey. And yes. uh, when I, <laughs> this is interesting, when I came back to England, I found it almost an anticlimax, in natural fact, right. because I was looking for the head of this black. I was looking for the head of this that. I, I said, hmm, okay. We're having a problem, Houston. We're having a problem yeah. <laughs> because there's, there's, although yeah. it's part of the British, the British Commonwealth, yes. I don't see a lot of our black brothers in yes. places yeah. of influence. Yes, we still Absolutely. have the whole white boys' school going on. Hmm, yes, 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 yes. And it's you know, it, it, it's very significant, and that's something that's so reflected throughout society. You know, in 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 this world, you know, which we must 
do our best to put right. Because talking to you and talking mm -hmm. to quite a few other people, of um, you're role model. And there's a lot of people that are role models. And we, we've got to get this out there so that our youngsters, especially the, 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 the male youngsters, you know. Oh, did you say the male youngsters, did you say? What, yes. what, what did you say? <laughs> yes. And very important to pass, we need to be able to pass the creative baton change. It must yes. be where we influence them intellectually and spiritually into yes. psychic. They must yeah. understand that long-term mastery is psychic. Yes. That they, be, that they become, they, be, they become power brokers, movers and shakers in their respective discipline. Notice that word, the word, in their respective discipline, that they will be the 5%. Right. So when the name is being mentioned, this is, yeah, oh yes, 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 yes. <laughs> name your price, sir. Absolutely. Look, look, Absolutely. This is Absolutely. all I mean. I don't care what they talk about getting creeds or what I said. What is your baton change influence? Who are you impacting? Who is the next ground of school, creative power brokers, that school of thought? What are you saying to them? Where mm. are they going? Are they are they losing their rubber and trying to simulate in a society? Or do they know who they are? Hmm? At this point, do they know? They, 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 are they instrumental? Are they are they operating a covert operation where they are creating impact one step wow. at a time? Hmm. Wow! One wow. student wow. at a time. Wow. One wow. colleague at a time. I, hmm. I, I I love all of this, and it's it's a fitting sort of uh, place to, to to end the first episode. Um, That's correct. Yes. Come back. And you know, with my taste buds all wet, <laughs> yes, <laughs> with, an uh, with anticipation <laughs> for the eighties <laughs> now, for the eighties, brother, because the eighties <laughs> is interesting. Because uh, one part of the eighties I lived in the UK, and the next part was living in the US. Uh, yes. First two years under the Reagan administration, and the next wow. part of the eighties under the Bush senior administration. Wow, wow. plenty mm. to talk about. Plenty to yes, talk about, yes. Kevin. It, yes, it's sir. been absolutely fantastic, right? And and I, I love all of this because you've given a different dimension to um, the other people that I've interviewed because, you know, it's all topical, but different topics, different subjects, different journeys. been fantastic. Let's end here and let's resume again. It's a pleasure, sir. Yes, yeah. you just let me know when you're ready, sir. Yeah. And we deliver it and we put some more key data around yeah. that it's because some some interesting just before we leave uh, this uh, music of black origin in the u.s did over 600 million in gross earning during the late 70s early 80s music wow. of black origin did wow. over 600 million in gross earning wow. over half a billion dollars you can imagine how much is that in today's money but anyhow I'll finish at that and right. then we talk again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. And let's Pleasure, catch up sir. again and do it again and some more. All right. Peace, peace and love, my brother. Or oh, is that it? Peace In and love. What good, as you say. Yes. <laughs> Rich blessing, brethren. Rich blessing. <laughs> what good. Yeah. Bye bye now. Mm.